Welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Mike Wilker, and it's an honor and a pleasure to be with you for our worship service this morning. As we go through the worship service, you'll hear the biblical text for today carry some strong words. They recognize that violence and terror and fear are all around us, and yet in the midst of that, Jesus promises that God's love will be with us, caring for us, and pulling us through. We ask that you would join us as we follow Jesus into this life of discipleship. Now we'll begin by remembering our baptism into Jesus Christ that makes everything new and gives us the courage to go forward in life. Let us begin with the confession and forgiveness of sin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Wow. That was some prayer that Pastor Ben just led us in. I think it's the only prayer that we say in church that says, asks God to help us fight and not heed the wounds. Well, that's an ancient prayer, actually. It's a prayer that's 400 years old. It was first prayed by a man named Ignatius of Loyola. And he was a person who was a priest and a pastor, and he helped form what was called the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. And they're people who are still around today, 400 years later. They teach people about the love of God. They encourage us to do the right thing, and they help people pray. But following Jesus and doing the right thing can be very hard, and Ignatius knew that. And he wanted to give us this prayer to encourage us to be brave and generous, even when other people try to stop us from doing the good things that God wants us to do. Well, Jesus knew it would be hard for his followers, like you and me, to do the things that God wants us to do when other people try to stop us. And sometimes they might even try to hurt us when we do what God asks us to do. In the Bible, Though Jesus tells us not to be afraid, God is with you and cares for you. Jesus tells us to look at the little birds, like the sparrows that might be in your garden, or the other little animals that might be living with you in your house. You know how much you love them and care for them. Well, then God or Jesus asks us to think about and imagine how much God cares for us as a parent holds a little child. That's how much God loves you as well, counting every hair on your head. So when you're doing the right thing God asks you to do, but other people are trying to stop you or being mean to you because you're trying to do the right thing, remember that Jesus encourages you to not be afraid and to remember God's strong love for you. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for today. Help us to be brave and remind us that you love and care for us always. Amen. I'm going to read a book in the part two of the children's sermon called Get Up, Stand Up. It's based on a song by Bob Marley. The first reading is from Jeremiah 20, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior, Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God, Word of Life. In response to the reading from Jeremiah, let us read together this portion of Psalm 69. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. 
The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house feasible, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. And do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and power to you from Jesus Christ. We have been buried with him by baptism into death 
so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might walk in newness of life. In the early 1990s, Palestinians and Israelis were experiencing a long eruption of violence. 20 years of simmering oppression, occupation, and fear had boiled over into the first Palestinian Intifada and the Israeli Defense Forces response. Rockets were fired across the border, destroying homes and schools, killing people of every age. By the end of the Intifada, 1,500 Palestinians and 185 Israelis were killed. After one of the attacks, a television crew reached a community that had been bombarded. Two men started shouting into the camera about how they would avenge the attack with even greater acts of destruction. Suddenly, an older woman dressed in black interrupted the men and spoke up. No, no, we must stop all this. We must not continue this. This will only lead to more death. The men were shocked to silence. And then they tried to justify themselves again. And the older woman raised her finger and again said, no. Now this prophetic woman defied the expectations of her community. She didn't say stay silent, and she was vulnerable because of her age and her gender and perhaps because of her family status. But she denounced her community's captivity to vengeance and violence. And they were all ready to be united in death. Instead, with her prophetic words and using her finger like a sword, she divided them so she could lead them to life. Well, this is the kind of division Jesus brings. Division which breaks up the hegemonic, all-encompassing system of sin. Now, this is the call of Jesus, to say no to the violence of nationalism, to resist and abolish structural racism, to stop and dismantle the abuse of patriarchy. The dismantling of family and cultural structures that idolize men and their progeny and their patriarchy is exactly what Jesus is referring to when he talks about setting people in the same household against one another. Jesus is calling the disciples out of family systems and entire cultural systems that oppress and dehumanize them and into a beloved community and a way of life in which we can all be more fully human. It's a bit ironic that by following the continuous reading of the lectionary, this particular biblical text falls on Father's Day in the United States. But ultimately, when we follow Jesus, even our roles as parents, children, and siblings can be freed from domination and abuse and instead be marked by God's steadfast love and mercy. Last summer, after seven years of study and prayer, the ELCA Churchwide Assembly adopted a social statement on faith, sexism, and justice. It was passed by 97%. It labels sexism and patriarchy as sins and confesses the church's complicity in them. The church statement openly speaks about the pain and suffering that sexism and patriarchy cause women and girls, including trans women and gender-fluid people, in the church and in the rest of society. In addition, the church declares that although men and boys often benefit from this social system, patriarchal structures and values also harm men and boys, including gay and transgender men. They are harmed, the statement says, when they are pressured to conform to narrow gender stereotypes or are unable to live out a false ideal of male superiority and control. People of all genders who do not conform to gender-based roles and stereotypes often are not seen or valued. Sometimes they are even violently oppressed and even killed. Finally, the statement says that men of all racial and ethnic minorities in North America may experience patriarchy and sexism, particularly intertwined with white privilege. The message of white identified patriarchy and sexism is that men and boys of color are not fully men and boys. Well, the ELCA also proclaimed God's forgiveness and liberation in Jesus Christ 
From the proclamation of this good news, the church pledged to a variety of actions to seek equity and justice for women and girls and gender non-conforming people. After the vote, the assembly rose in a standing ovation and sang the Canticle of the Turning, a hymn based on the song of Mary, the mother of Jesus. We'll conclude our sermon today by singing that same hymn. Now, even though the assembly ended on a hopeful note, the way of the cross can still be dangerous for the followers of Jesus. There's no promise in this gospel text from Jesus that we won't get hurt by others when we follow him. In today's gospel text, Jesus lays out the reality of the struggle before him and his followers. They will find that the way of discipleship is perhaps harder for themselves than it is for their teacher and certainly will be no better. And it might even be more harsh, like the difference between the life of a landowner and a farm worker. So Jesus, Jesus' call to his disciples to take up the cross does not refer to some trivial burden, a little hardship there and a little hardship here. Instead, as Professor Warren Carter of Phillips Seminary in Tulsa says, to take up the cross is to publicly identify as those who threaten the empire and seek to be free from domination. By doing so, shame, social rejection, pain, violence, and humiliation will be heaped upon them by the rest of the society. Now, God's faithful people have often been persecuted by the religious and political authorities of their day. Jeremiah was a prophet called by God to warn the ancient kingdom of Judah of its unfaithfulness and injustice. Jeremiah's message, delivered while Babylonian forces besieged Jerusalem, did not make Jeremiah popular. In fact, his fellow priests threatened to kill him, and the king had his scrolls burned and imprisoned often. Once Jeremiah's captors threw him into a deep cistern and left him to die in the muck and the mire. Psalm 67, which we read earlier, is a prayer of someone like Jeremiah, a person who tries to be faithful to God, yet suffers shame and reproach even from family members. When the faithful person publicly laments and grieves the nation's sin, the people cast insults and hurl shame. Now the faithful one who suffer calls upon the Lord to come to the rescue. However, the appeal for salvation is not based upon our faithfulness or zeal. The call for help is grounded in God's steadfast love and mighty mercy. Our heroic zeal does not save us. God's amazing grace does. So Jesus tells his disciples to have no fear of the ones who threaten and bully them. God's got this. God's got you, like a father holding a baby. So Jesus encourages them to bring the truth they learn into the open and to proclaim the good news from the rooftops. And Jesus is calling us into places that will be uncomfortable, to say the least. We may feel confused and uncertain, but this will be the place of our deepest learning and our most profound change. So even though you are unsure at times, be brave. You know, Jesus doesn't want us to be naive or careless. Using more animal metaphors, Jesus also tells his disciples that they will be like sheep among the wolves and that they should be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Even though they're vulnerable, they should use, we should use all of our analytical gifts and strategic wiles to discern how to advance God's liberating work right now. And we should not give in to vengeance, arrogance, or other sinfulness. Instead, Jesus calls his disciples, us, to be accountable to one another, especially to the most vulnerable. And Jesus calls those of us who have a higher status or more privilege in the world's eyes to open our hearts and listen intently to the ones suffering the most from our sinfulness. Finally, Jesus doesn't call us to do this work alone as individuals. Jesus calls us into and forward into a beloved community. You can't win liberation only for yourself. We need to organize and share our particular gifts generously with one another. For the world is about to turn. Thanks be to God.
our faith, saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We unite in prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Today we combine the ancient form of prayer called a bidding prayer with a contemporary online technique called a chatterfall. A chatterfall is when a group of people online use the online chat boxes to respond to a question, all at the same time. Their responses cascade down the chat box like a waterfall. So if you're following along online, here's how we'll combine a bidding prayer and a chatterfall. I'll invite you to pray about one subject at a time, for example, for the religious communities and leaders we name before you now, we pray. Then I will pause silently. During the silence, you can say the names of people or places that need God's spirit. For those who want to use the chatterfall during the silence, type the name in the chat box, but wait to press enter until I say, hear us, O God. So during the silence, you could say or type Bishop Guy Irwin or Augustana Aug Lutheran Church, then when I say, hear us, O God, you can press your enter key and all the places we typed will cascade like a prayer waterfall. We'll do that for each petition. Now let us prepare our minds and bodies for prayer. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Bless congregations, theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us to grow in faith, especially those who have opened our ears to listen to other siblings. For the religious communities and leaders we name now before you, we pray. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill-used for too long. For the earth and the places and the creatures we name before you now, we pray. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Especially near World Refugee Day on June 20th, we pray for refugees and migrants and the people that welcome and support them. For the nations and communities we name before you now, we pray. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. For all those we name who are put down or pushed out, we pray. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who are hungry. For all those we name who need your spirit of wholeness and life, we pray.
Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hear also the cries of our own hearts, for our grief and joy, for our tears and laughter, for our fears and dreams, for our, all ourselves, we pray. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with your friends and family while we listen to a musical offering. You may also take this time to text Peace Be With You to another person, maybe a friend you miss seeing in person at worship or a neighbor in another city or state or family far away. Peace be with you all. Again, thank you for joining us for worship this morning, and thank you for your gifts to our congregation and to the ministries here. Recently, we have um, been able to give out of the pastor's discretionary fund, funds that you have entrusted to Pastor Mike and myself for 
members of our community, those who maybe have been influenced or affected by COVID, either economically or health-wise, we're able to support one another in our community, and we are so grateful for your continued gifts to the congregation and to the discretionary fund. We also are excited and are looking forward to live streaming worship starting in August or September. This was passed by council and proposed by the Engagement and Communication Committee last week. And we are excited for this opportunity and we also ask for your gifts toward this. All of the information can be found in the Weekly Word and you can contact me about the best way you can give toward this exciting new feature for worship. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.